Hello there, welcome back to another edition of Pimp My Filter and in this video we're going to take a look at a filter which I've never actually seen before, never had a hands on with this one. That is the Better 1620 canister filter. Now Better is a trading name from a company called J&K Aquatics based in the UK and when I had a shop we dealt with that company for many many years they supply good stuff at a reasonable price, so I'm hoping that this filter will continue that trend. As usual, I'm not going to get into the pipework or the spray bar, anything like that, unless it is different to what a normal canister filter would be. But from what I'm seeing on here, it doesn't appear to be. However, after seeing that, turn the box around. And just here, there's a little picture of a surface skimmer which can attach to the uplift pipe. So you can draw from the bottom of your tank and from the surface. Just there. Because the box of fittings hasn't been opened, I'll leave it unopened. But that is a nice touch. Handle on there is a nice touch as well. Decent priming pump as well. Fittings look pretty substantial. So, so far it's looking good. And on the top of the filter we've got what looks like a, a like an inspection sort of a, a viewing port. So you can see if the UV light's on. And that protects the switch. Okay, I'm just going to read straight off the side of the box here with relation to where the water flows and what happens in this filter. Then we're going to take it apart and we'll see if that information marries with what we're seeing inside the filter. So, water flow. Unfiltered water flows in from the aquarium and into the UV chamber where harmful bacteria and parasites are neutralised, i.e. killed. The water then flows into a multi-stage filtration system passing through the media trays and flowing to the top clean and clear which would tell me it works from the bottom up as most canister filters do. As there is no possible bypass to the filtering system if the flow rate drops off this is an indication that the filter requires some cleaning or maintenance. Yep, basically if your fine pad gets clogged you need to pull it apart and take a look inside the filter. The stated output for this particular pump in the filter is 1620 litres per hour which is approximately 426 US gallons per hour. Obviously that's at zero head so you've got no pipes or anything attached and you've got nothing in the filter when that reading is taken. Normally with a canister filter safely you can halve that so instead of 1600 litres per hour it's pumping about 800 in a real world situation once you get it set up. And the manufacturer says it should be able to cope with a tank up to 360 litres, which is 95 US gallons. So I'm hoping that this will take around about three and a half kilos of media, but we shall see. Okay, so our water comes in from the tank. It goes over the UV light, and that's got like a, a bit of a vortex sort of attachment. So the water spins around, drops down this pipe here, which goes all the way to the bottom. So it ends up in the bottom of there. We do have a little bit of space in the bottom of there as well, if we wanted to put some rings just to settle the flow out. And then it rises up through a coarse pad, plastic balls, um, if what I thought was a fine pad, but it's actually quite a coarse pad. Another coarse pad, some pretty decent sintered glass rings, and then out through some carbon with a fine pad over the top. This is obviously all heat sealed in. Yeah, there we go. Not much carbon in there, unfortunately. We've got another fine-ish pad underneath there, so it goes through all that lot, through the fine pad, up, through the carbon, and out of a really, really fine pad. I mean, that's almost like something you'd get in a in a vacuum cleaner, you know. And that is obviously a replaceable cartridge. Now, as you know, 
I'm not a fan of replaceable cartridges, really there's no need for them. And the amount of carbon that you get in there would cost pennies. So I don't think we'll be using this, even though it is beautifully made. We're going to be using the coarse pad and the fine pad. Let's see how much extra space we have. Yeah. And we'll put a medium density pad between those in the bottom tray. That'll give us two full trays of media. So it's looking promising. While I'm cutting this out, I just want to say a big thanks to Liam from Lanchester Garden Centre, aka Dramatic Aquatics, who brought this filter up for me. This is actually to be used on his tank. Okay, that looks all right. Perfect fit. Okay, so that is our bottom tray. Water comes down into the bottom, flows up, hits the coarse pad, medium pad, fine pad, up into two trays of media. As far as the filter media that comes with the filter goes, these sintered glass rings would be the equivalent of Sierra Ciparax in their construction, which is just a single particle size and a very regular structure. They are very good for supporting aerobic bacteria, but because you've got that get big hole through the middle, you don't really have the structure suitable for supporting anaerobic bacteria, which is the one that controls the nitrates. So I could almost guarantee that if Liam had set this up as it came from the manufacturer, even though there's a decent amount of rings, they wouldn't be able to support enough anaerobic bacteria for the full cycle. And those balls are balls. Balls. There's really no need for these in any filter, unless it's a pretty big filter and you've got them scattered on the bottom for your first stage of like primary settlement to catch heavy muck. The surface area on all of those balls there combined will be nowhere near what it is on even one piece of this sintered glass ring. And I'm just wondering whether these rings are maybe a little bit too big to put in the bottom of the filter. No, they'll go in there nicely. There you go, we've got one layer of rings in the bottom of there. And what that'll do is settle out the flow when it's come from the tank, laden with heavy muck, over the UV, into the bottom, the water ordinarily would just go boom, straight up against that foam in the bottom tray. Now it's going to come down and it's going to go through various tubes, it's going to get stuck in little dead ends, it's going to hopefully settle out a lot of the heavy muck before the water rises up through the trees and that'll extend our maintenance times. Ideally, I would use something like Eheim Mech in the bottom of there because it's a lot smaller, it's a lot harder as well. Obviously, the Eheim Mech is nowhere near as good at supporting bacteria as the sintered glass rings, but we're not actually using it in the bottom of there to support bacteria. We're using it to slow down the flow and catch all the heavy muck. So the Eheim Mech would have been my first choice for there don't have any on hand unfortunately, so that's why I'm using those sintered glass rings. I'll put the link to the Eheim Mech in the video description because it's cracking stuff. Perfect for primary settlement. Okay, so that's the very bottom of our filter done, the primary settlement. Then we've got the secondary settlement and really the total cleaning of the water. That should make it clear by the time it's come through those forms. So we'll drop that in. Now that just leaves us two trays to fill with Biohome Ultimate. Okay. The ore 
awesome thing is, it takes 1.75 kilos for each tray. We've got two trays of media, so that adds up to 3.5 kilos, which is exactly what I said at the start I would like to see in this filter. I think that's the first time that's ever happened. And 3.5 kilos is approximately 7.7 .7 pounds. For you guys that like to count in 12s and 14s and 16s instead of 10s. Drop the other one in. And if the top goes on, I think we're done. We're done. Very good. And I swear I will publish the contents of my little black book with all the notes that I've made over the years of how much each particular filter I've ever taken a look at holds to my website, which is the Filter Pro website. It will go up there one day when I get time. Now I really like the simplicity of this filter. It's It doesn't look anything spectacular. There's nothing to catch if you're walking past it. You're not going to drag it onto the floor. It's got a handle for carrying it, which is important when it's got three and a half kilos of media in and it's full of water. That's going to weigh a good 10 kilos when it's full. So having a handle on to carry it is a bonus. Yeah, I like that. So, manufacturer says it'll be suitable for tanks up to 360 litres. We've got 3.5 kilos of Biohome Ultimate in there. That is bang on. Absolutely bang on. Because you'd normally use 1 kilo per 100 litres. So, for a normally stocked tropical tank, you can expect a full cycle in anything up to about 350 litres. Again, that's 95 US gallons. If it's heavily stocked, you can halve that down to about 180 litres. So if you've got a heavily stocked tank, one of these should give you a full cycle up to 180 litres, which will be approximately 47 US gallons. Considering the price is well under 100 English pounds, that to me represents a good deal considering how well constructed this is and the features it's got, because you've got the UV in there as well. You don't strictly speaking need a UV in a tank, but it certainly doesn't do any harm. One thing I will say though is, if you're setting this up on a new tank, leave the UV switched off for a couple of weeks. Especially if you've got the gel balls in to seed the media, because those gel balls will be dissolving. The bacteria will be flowing all the way through the system, so it'll be going all the way through all your filter media, through your foams, into the water, into the sand, into the rocks all over. Okay, that's another one done. If you've liked this video, give it a thumbs up, share it wherever you want online. Show it to anybody you think might benefit from seeing it. If you've got a filter you want me to take a look at and you're in the UK, by all means get in touch. My contact details are in the video description. So I've got my email address and my phone number in there. That's also displayed above me at all times when I'm making these videos. So get in touch. If I haven't shot a video on that particular filter that you want me to upgrade, by all means, I'll take a look, upgrade it, send it back to you for nothing. Thanks for watching. See you next time.